All right. Good evening, church, and happy new year, and welcome to 2022. Um, I know I've been slacking the last couple weeks on giving you guys a video, but uh, it's a new year, and we're getting right back into the Word. So uh, hopefully everybody's doing well, and I'm so excited that you were just uh, uh, here with me tonight to study His Word. So turn with me to Genesis chapter 13. We have started over in our reading plan, so hopefully you've uh, used you version or something to go ahead and set up your reading plan for the full year. I think you can still set it up and get caught back up. If not, we should be sending reading plans to you, or there should be a link in the description below. So let's get started here. Uh, today's reading, we've been in Genesis, which is a great book, especially when it comes to understanding who God is and what God's been doing. So uh, go ahead and turn me to Genesis chapter 13. And it says this, So Abram went up from Egypt to Negev to the Negev, he and his wife, and all that belonged to him, and Lot was with him. Lot was his nephew. Now Abraham was very rich in livestock, in silver and in gold. He went on his journeys from the Negev as far as Bethel, to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai, to the place of the altar which he had made there formerly. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. Now Lot, who went with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents, and the land could not sustain them while they were dwelling together, for their possessions were so great that they were not able to remain together. Now, I want you to understand and, and kind of see what's going on. Lift my chair up. Uh, to see what's kind of going on here is that Ab God is blessing Abraham. Um, the, Abram becomes Abraham later, right? He, uh, his name, his full name. And so God is blessing Abraham. And so not only is God blessing Abraham, he's also blessing Lot. And if we look back real quick, just flip back to chapter 12. It says this right at the very first, and this is kind of the Abraham covenant. And it says, now the Lord said, Abraham, go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you. God is making this covenant with Abraham saying, I want you to go to this land that I'm going to take you. I am going to lead you to this place. And with that, I will make you a great nation. This is the promise that was given to Abraham. It says, I will, and I will bless you and make your name great. And you, and so shall be a, and so you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who you bless. And the one who you curse, I will curse. And you all the, and in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. And so we see this kind of starting to come to pass where Abraham, God is blessing Abraham and he's getting livestock. He's getting all this stuff uh, that the Lord is providing for him uh, with this promise that I, if you obey me, if you follow me, if you allow me to lead you, Abram, I will give you this blessing. What a beautiful promise that we have for us today, too. Are we allowing God to lead? Now, the word we have for 2022 here is it's the word go. And, and part of this word go is, is I think, I think it's to go where God leads us. Go where he's taking us. And so now God, Abraham is going and he's doing this without any children. He's doing this without the promise already coming. Now, it'd be easier for, for God to say, listen, I'm going to make you a great nation. And you look around, well, I got two or three boys and, and sons. And, and uh, well, okay, thank you, Jesus. But how many times has God given you a promise and you don't have a solution yet? God says, hey, I want to bless you, but you have to still wait until God provides the blessing. I have two sons. If God said, listen, I'm going to bless you, make you a great nation, and your kids are going to have lots of kids and grandkids, and, and, and I'm going to use you, I'd say, okay, that's possible. But Abraham's doing all this in faith, and he gets... The faith that Abraham has is unprecedented. So the question is, uh, where is your faith? How strong is your faith when God calls you to go? When God calls you to move on? When God says, I got this plan for you? Or do we kind of get stuck waiting? Well, I kind of want to see what's going to happen first before I take that step. And so here's what happens. Verse 6, it says, that their possessions were so great they could not be... Uh, they were not able to remain together, and there were uh, strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. Now the Canaanite and the Perizzite were dwelling uh, there and then in the land. And so here we have, hey, nephew, God's blessing both of us. He's blessing everything that's going on, both of our hands, and the Lord's providing in miraculous ways. But we've gotten too big. Our, our, our servants are beginning to fight with one another. It's just 
we, we've both, we've, we've, the Lord's blessed us too much. Now imagine the problem you have there. The Lord has blessed you too much that you've gotten too big. Now what do you do? And so, so Abraham, in verse 8, he said a lot, Please let there be no strife between you and me, nor between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are your brothers. Is not the whole land before you? Please separate from me. If to the left, then I will go to the right, or if to the right, then I will go to the left. So Lot lifted up his eyes and saw the valley of the Jordan that was, that was well watered everywhere. This was before the Lord destro- destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt as you go to Zor. So Lot chose for himself all the valley of the Jordan, and Lot de- uh, journeyed eastward. Thus they separated from each other. I think about this decision that gets made and how... Lot looks and says, what would be best for me? Lot really made a selfish decision kind of based. Now, Abraham said, listen, you pick one way and and you go that way and I'll go the other way. If you go this direction, I'll go that way. And however you want to do it, that's fine. But Lot made a decision based on what his eyes saw. Sodom and Gomorrah was, was, was a horrible place that did horrible things. And, but a, but Lot didn't look at that. He looked at you know what? This beautiful, lush, green land, it, 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 it seems and it appears perfect. It seems like the logical choice. I'm going to take that. And I think that mindset can really get us in trouble when we just make our decisions and our choices based off what appears to be right or what seems to be right or what looks logic like, logically like the best choice. And I would challenge you today, to, before you make decisions based on um, what appears to be the right choice, to spend some time asking, God, what do you want? Which direction do you want me to go? Because so many times, just because it's the easiest choice doesn't make it the right choice. Or just because it's the simplest, easiest solution doesn't make it the right solution. And so it may be. But before you just jump right in there and and go through something, pray and seek the Lord on the matter. God, where do you want me to go? If we could if we could ask ourselves that question every time we made decisions, God, what is it you want me to do? And this is really what he's saying. He says, I want you to go. I'm going to make you a great nation. And if and Abraham says, Well, if you go that way, then I will go this way because I will go wherever the Lord wants me to go. And that has to be our heart. So he goes on here. Um, Verse 12, Abram settled in the land of Canaan while Lot settled in the cities of the valley and moved his tents as far as Sodom. Now the men of Sodom were wicked exceedingly and sinners against the Lord. I think about the compromises Lot had to make to settle in the valley. His thought was, man, of course, my, my, my flocks will flourish. My children, my grandchildren, they'll have the most beautiful place around. But he compromised living next to a very sinful nation, a very sinful city. What have you allowed to remain in your life or live next to you that is ungodly? Because if there's something, if you've made compromise to allow that sin or sinful thing, how can we expect God to bless us? How can we expect God to... God says, listen, you go where I call you to go, and I'll do the rest. Not you try to figure it out and then ask for me to bail you out. I just want you to catch the difference there. Verse 14 says this, The Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, Now lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward, no, northward and southward and eastward and westward, for all the land which you see, I will give it to you and your descendants forever. And I wonder what Abraham said when... when I mean, he's probably looking at the two and saying, all right, well, you pick and I'll take whatever's left. And he's like, oh my goodness, but look at how much nicer it is down there. And as he heads up, God says, listen, I want you to look all around. You see everything you see? Yeah, this is all going to be yours one day. Your descendants will have all of this one day. I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth so that anyone, uh, so that if anyone can number the dust of the earth, then your descendants can also be numbered. And can you imagine picking up a handful of rocks or dust or dirt from your hand? And can, can, you, can you count that? And he's saying, that's what I'm going to do with you. And this was before Abraham even had one son. 
Arise, verse 7, he says, Walk about the land through its length and breadth, for I will give it to you. Then Abraham moved his tent and came and dwelt by the oaks of Mamre, which are in Hebron. And there he built an altar to the Lord. There's a few things that I just want to close with some of this. God gave Abraham a promise. Abraham continued to follow God where God wanted. He, he gave Lot the choice to go wherever he wanted. Abraham said, I will follow God no matter what. And when God said, listen, I'm going to still give you this promise. I still have this blessing for you. What does Abraham do? He built an altar to the Lord. He gave worship. He gave praise, honor, and glory to God. And I want to just encourage you with this. That here we are in a new year. And I'm sure we all have different directions we're thinking of going. Before we choose if this is the right direction or if this is the right direction, stop and seek the Lord on what He wants you to do, on where He wants you to go. Don't just go because it looks shinier and prettier. Go because God told you to go that way. And then as you go, remember the promises He has for you and build that altar. Give Him the praise, honor, and worship. Don't forget who's given you your blessings. Well, I hope that encourages you just a little bit tonight. I know it's a, uh, it, it's always exciting to get into the Word, and it's great to be back with you guys. So let me pray with you, and uh, and thank you so much. Father, we thank you for each and every one here. God, I pray you just bless them, watch over them, keep them safe. Thank you for all that you're doing. Encourage us this week. Father, help us to hear from you on which way to go. Give us an opportunity to share your love with someone else. Lord, we thank you for 2022. Use us where we are in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. Have a great week, and I hope to see you all on Sunday. Talk to you later. Bye.